Good afternoon. Welcome to our exclusive screening of Spark, Robin Williams and his battle with Lewy body dementia here at our Research Center of Excellence at the University of Colorado. My name is Samantha Holden, the co-director of our research center here, as well as a movement disorders and behavioral neurologist. We are so excited to be able to view this film together as well as to address some questions and comments at the end with a great panel, including Dr. Karina Drake, a geropsychiatrist, and Dr. Evan Pliss, a geropsychologist. This film has been supplied by the Lewy Body Dementia Association, of which we belong as a research center of excellence, along with 25 other sites across the country. More information about the LBDA can be found at their website listed here. In addition, support for this film was provided by Acadia Pharmaceuticals. This film will run in its entirety with no start and stop, and it is only available through the LBDA specifically. Please make sure to put any of your questions and comments into the chat box during the film, which will all be addressed at the end of the film with our panel. I'd like to just provide a brief overview of Lewy body dementia as a primer as we get into this great educational film. Thinking about the broad scope of cognitive impairment throughout the lifespan, there are stages of severity of impairment, starting with what we would consider normal aging, walking into a room, forgetting what you went in there for, trying to remember the name of an acquaintance, not necessarily signs that something else more insidious is going on, but maybe something to keep an eye on. The next stage up would be what's considered mild cognitive impairment, where there is some objective deficit on cognitive testing, but it is not yet to a level that would impair somebody's daily function. What pushes things over into a category of dementia is that those daily functions are now being impaired by the level of cognitive impairment, starting with complicated things like paying bills, managing medications or driving, but could progress to even more basic things like getting dressed, eating or grooming. Dementia is not a specific disease itself, but rather a category of conditions that cause that degree of impairment cognitively and functionally. Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of neurodegenerative dementia, affecting 60 to 70% of people. But as circled here, Lewy body dementia is also very common, affecting up to 25%, but yet is under-recognized and under-diagnosed. And that is one of the biggest goals of this type of film today, as well as our overall outreach through the LBDA. So when we start talking about Lewy body dementia, it's very easy to start getting confused in the semantics and the names that we use somewhat interchangeably. But to be as precise as possible with this terminology and what it means for the person living with the symptoms themselves, we do want to be more mindful of the language. When we talk about Lewy bodies, this is what we're thinking about. If we were to look at the brain under a microscope of somebody with a Lewy body disease, within the brain cells, the neurons, we would see these inclusions, these round bubbles inside of the, the body of the neuron that should not be there. And within that inclusion, there is an abnormally folded protein called alpha synuclein. We think that the brain cells in their attempt to get rid of this abnormal protein package it up into these little bubbles, but then they can't get rid of that. And then the brain cells that contain this alpha synuclein can no longer do their work and start to degenerate over time. So this is what the Lewy body is in Lewy body dementia. But when we think about the broad category of conditions that can include these Lewy bodies inside of the person's brain, it's not just Lewy body dementia. Lewy body diseases also include Parkinson's disease, in which there may be no thinking or memory impairments, but people with Parkinson's disease, starting with stiffness, slowness, or shakiness, 
can over time develop dementia, which is termed Parkinson's disease dementia. Lewy body dementia is also a broader category term that could indicate Parkinson's disease dementia, where somebody had Parkinson's and later developed dementia, or dementia with Lewy bodies, where the thinking and memory trouble started first. The only difference between these two conditions is what came first. Was it the movement symptoms of slowness, stiffness, or shakiness, and then at least one year later, somebody developed thinking and memory changes, which would be Parkinson's dementia, or did the thinking and memory trouble come first or at the same time as the stiffness, shakiness, or slowness? And that would be Lewy body dementia. This is really the only difference between these two conditions is what came first and what's termed as the one year rule that somebody had a diagnosis of Parkinson's for at least a year before they developed dementia could therefore not be dementia with Lewy bodies. As we'll see, a lot of the symptoms of both Parkinson's disease dementia as well as dementia with Lewy bodies overlap. So that's why the timing of onset is so crucial. It could be difficult if it's been several years with somebody with symptoms of both problems, movement and behavior, to sort out what exactly came first, which is another reason why, why early intervention and early diagnosis is so crucial. As we'll see, including in Robin's story, that the diagnosis of dementia with Lewy bodies is under-recognized and under-diagnosed even by neurologists. And on average, it takes a year and a half and three different doctors to receive the right diagnosis, which is completely unacceptable and what we're attempting to change with these types of educational events and outreach efforts. In order to diagnose dementia with Lewy bodies, there are very clear criteria which were updated in 2017. There must be dementia, meaning enough cognitive impairment that somebody is no longer fully independent, along with two of these core clinical features. Parkinsonism, well-formed visual hallucinations, usually people or animals, REM sleep behavior disorder, which is the acting out of dreams, and cognitive fluctuations, which are very significant ups and downs in the person's level of alertness or awareness. Importantly, none of these symptoms would distinguish between Parkinson's disease dementia and dementia with Lewy bodies. Though they are more frequently encountered in dementia with Lewy bodies, they could also be present in Parkinson's disease. And again, that timing of onset, what came first, is the best way to tell the difference. If we were to only have one of those core clinical features, Parkinsonism, visual hallucinations, REM behavior disorder, or cognitive fluctuations, we could then proceed with additional testing, which could include a DAT scan or dopamine transporter scan, which will tell us the level of dopamine inside the person's brain and can be helpful for separating dementia with Lewy bodies from other forms of dementia, such as Alzheimer's disease, but again, will not distinguish Parkinson's from dementia with Lewy bodies. We could do a sleep study looking for what's happening when that person is acting out their dreams to see if their muscles are active when they should not be or a cardiac nuclear medicine scan called a MIB scan, which can also be abnormal in people with dementia with Lewy bodies related to the changes in blood pressure and heart rate in people with DLB, but would be normal in other dementias like Alzheimer's. So as we watch the film together today, just a few things to keep in mind that Parkinson's dementia and dementia with Lewy bodies are more on a spectrum than completely different diseases, and that umbrella category of Lewy body dementia encompasses both, and the only difference between the two is what came first. Recognition <clears throat> and the correct diagnosis of these conditions are the important first steps to getting new treatments, better treatments, 
as well as future research to better understand both these conditions. So with that, we'll start the film and we'll see you after.